News every 15 minutes, weather every 10, and sports twice an hour. News Talk KGVO, AM 1290 and now 101.5 FM. You're listening to Montana Morning with Peter Christian. A man shot by a sheriff's deputy during a traffic stop in Beaverhead County has died. Good morning, everyone. It's Montana Morning. It's Tuesday, November 17th, 2015. Right now, the sky's cloudy. It's 30 degrees. Lots of weather on the way. Right now, though, things fairly calm. We have 30 degrees. Roads mostly bare and dry, with an exception. And that's from St. Regis up over Lookout past their snow cover right now. Our newscast this morning, sponsored by Kootenai Creek Village, the maintenance free active adult community in Stevensville, where they offer the best of Western Montana living. A man who was shot after a Beaverhead County Sheriff's deputy said he threatened him with a rifle during a traffic stop has died. Investigators say 22-year-old Andrew Blake was shot after he brandished a rifle south of Dillon November 10th. He died at a Salt Lake City hospital yesterday. Beaverhead County Sheriff Franklin Klusner said the deputy stopped the Dillon man shortly after getting a report of a possible drunk driver. The sheriff says Blake got out of his pickup with his rifle, manipulated the bolt action, and the deputy shot him. The sheriff's office convened a review board and determined yesterday, or make that last Thursday, that the deputy, quote, acted within and followed agency policy and procedures, end quote. The Beaverhead County Attorney's Office will order an inquest into the man's death. An early morning fire at a mobile home in Missoula caused significant damage, but no injuries. Acting Battalion Chief Ron Lubke says the call came in just after 5 yesterday morning for a fire on Bailey Street. A first engine arrived, and uh, there was indeed a fire on the porch that had communicated to the exterior of the home. The uh, occupants had all evacuated safely with no injuries, and they had been trying to fight the fire, and it kind of held it in check, and then the first engine that arrived was able to knock it down. Lubke said the fire had spread to the structure itself. It did uh, penetrate into the attic and the roof, uh, which required uh, quite a bit of overhaul work. Uh, But uh, generally speaking, it was a good stop and uh, the structure will be salvageable. It is believed that a cigarette in a planter box on the front porch is the cause of the fire. Lubke said the damage is about $5,000. Sweeping changes to the rules governing Montana's election campaigns are set to go before a legislative committee that's already delayed them once. The proposed rules by Commissioner of Political Practices Jonathan Modell would require more groups to disclose their contributions and spending and require electronic reporting of contributions. The State Administrative and Veterans Affairs Committee may attempt to delay implementation of the proposed rules today, but the rule's opponents may not have the votes they had in August to hold them up. Democratic Representative Bryce Bennett of Missoula, who objected to the rules previously, said many of his concerns have been met and he'll now support them. Twenty-three Republican legislators have requested a poll of all state lawmakers to determine whether Motul's rules comply with the intent of the legislature's bill. Governor Steve Bullock announced yesterday Montana will continue to allow Syrian refugees safe haven if they request it. According to Bullock spokesman Mike Wessler, continuing to allow access to refugees from Syria is, quote, a refusal to give in to terror, end quote. Montana will not allow any terrorist organizations to intimidate us into abandoning our values. Uh, The safety of Montana is Governor Bullock's top priority. Uh, No Syrian refugees have been settled in the state, and we've had no formal request to do so. Montana has a process in place for considering refugee settlement requests. Uh, We're reviewing these protocols to ensure that if a request comes, we take all appropriate steps to ensure that the safety of Montanans will not be jeopardized by their placement. Governor Bullock's position is not in line with that of Senator Steve Daines, who said, although he has sympathy for those suffering because of the Syrian civil war, better background checks are needed. Daines said, quote, the U.S. should immediately stop taking in new refugees from the region. We're at war with Islamic extremists. And anything less than 100 percent verification of these refugees' backgrounds put our, puts our national security at risk, end quote. The new commander of the nation's land-based nuclear missiles says the Air Force has moved on from problems of misbehavior among launch officers. Major General Anthony Cotton said he'll continue to push for cultural change among the ranks. Cotton formally took command Monday of the 20th Air Force, which includes intercontinental ballistic missile wings based in F.E. Warren Air Force Base in Cheyenne, Minot Air Force Base in North Dakota, and Malmstrom Air Force Base in Great Falls possible purchase of Plum Creek land in western Montana by Weyerhaeuser has already raised concerns among Montana's hunting groups. But now, state officials are beginning to question the purchase as well. State Auditor Mulligan Lindeen's Land Board Advisor Jeff Barber said she raised questions about the purchase during Monday's Montana Land Board meeting. Plum Creek has always been 
a real good neighbor and offering free and open public access to their land. So we looked at Weyerhaeuser and saw that they have a fee system, either per, by permits or by exclusive lease. And so Monica raised the question at the land board meeting today, what's this going to mean for Plum Creek's lands going into the future? Barber says the land board is concerned about how a change in access policy could impact access to state lands. What is Weyerhaeuser's policy exactly? How will they implement it in Montana? What have they done elsewhere? There are a number of state lands that are in holdings within Plum Creek's uh, property. And what's going to happen with public access on those state lands? So, you know, there's the potential here of impacting over 700,000 acres of land that the public can access right now. Barber says the land board hopes to have answers to some of their many questions during the December meeting. Barber says it's still unclear how much influence the land board could have over Weyerhaeuser's decisions, but that Lindine is pushing for access to remain as open as it has under Plum Creek. Members of the Billings Jewish community came together to help passengers of an El Al flight headed to Los Angeles. It made an emergency landing in Montana, leaving 300 passengers stranded. The Billings Gazette reports Donna Healy, a member of the congregation Beth Aaron, delivered kosher snacks as well as staples such as deodorant and diapers to the almost 300 passengers from the flight to Tel Aviv. A rabbi from Bozeman also made the trip to Billings to deliver a large quantity of food. The LL flight made an emergency landing in Billings Sunday after the guru reported a warning light indicated a fire in one engine. No one was injured. A major wind event with possible historic impacts is expected to roar through northern Idaho and western Montana tonight through tomorrow. Meteorologist Leanne Allegretto with the National Weather Service says the system has the capacity to cause major damage to property around the area, especially in the Bitterroot Valley. Everywhere will be windy, but there is some signatures in our forecast models that show a potential mountain wave that could develop in the Bitterroot Valley, and that just spells damaging winds uh, for the entire valley in, in that regard. Allegretto said damaging winds range from 50 to 60 miles per hour. Anytime those wind gusts are that strong for that long, down trees, power outages, power lines across the road, across properties, those are all very common. And that's why it, we can't stress enough, you know, just how impactful these winds are going to be. Of course, western Montana is no, da- pardon me, no stranger to wind damage recently, right? Allegretto said drivers and hunters who will be traveling in areas impacted by the high winds should use extreme caution. News Talk Time 612. News Talk KGVO. Missoula's official weather station. Mostly cloudy to cloudy skies with areas of rain and snowfall. High temperatures will warm into the upper 40s this afternoon. Our winds will begin to increase this afternoon as well with wind gusts as high as 40 miles per hour overnight. I'm meteorologist Brooke Foster for Missoula's KECI 13.